Recently I was watching the fairly fun, but don't go out of your way to see it if you don't have to, film Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, and there was something in it which reminded me of a question which has been nagging at me for many years about the Gibraltar Strait. Now, in the film, uh, the writer has a character say that they can't land some boats at a particular jetty uh, on an island which is in the Aegean because the tides are wrong. Yeah, the tidal range in that part of the world is, is like, like that. It's not going to stop you landing a boat. It's, it's, it's not a plot point. But American writers, of course, they're from America, where you have the Atlantic on one side and the, and the Pacific on the other, and they have huge ocean tidal ranges of 8 to 20 feet. Um, so that will provide, prevent a, a boat from landing at a jetty at the wrong time of day, or, and sometimes it's difficult to, 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 to launch a, a sailing vessel if the tide's going in the wrong direction, or whatever. But that's not a factor in the Aegean, something they get wrong in loads of films, particularly ancient films of the ancient Egyptians and Romans. Quickly, we will miss the tide. No, you, you really won't. You don't have to worry about that. It's the Mediterranean. But if the Atlantic over here is going up and down by a really huge amount, and the Mediterranean here is just going up and down by an almost invisibly negligible amount. Uh, seriously, go to a, a, a beach resort in the Mediterranean. You'll see the sun lounges and so forth. They leave them on the beach all day within a few feet of the sea, and it's fine. Anyway, if that's happening, there's a, there a moment, well, there are two moments and even four moments every day when the, 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 the water levels either side of the Gibraltar Strait are so different that surely you're going to get a vast inundation of water. Can you imagine 20 feet of water higher the whole of the Atlantic, which is enormous in comparison with the Mediterranean? Um, just think what a weight of water that is. If you were to build a scale uh, model of that in your bath, uh, with, with sand or whatever representing the land, and then you, you somehow created that sort of level of difference, that you'd get this great inrush of water shooting down the bath and, and scattering sand all over the place. So, does that happen then? Well, no, it doesn't. Uh, if it did, it would be a really famous fact. And yet, it seems that ships are able to go in both directions at all times of day, merrily in and out of the uh, Mediterranean, it doesn't seem to be a really big problem. So how is that possible then? I mean, you look at a map of the Mediterranean and uh, straight away you can see that uh, the tiny, tiny gap that is only like one or two pixels wide, um, you've got to get all the tides through through that? Really? Um, that surely there's going to be a just, it's been like a, a dam being let loose, like the, the, the Hoover Dam, but no doesn't happen. Anyway, so I read up on why it doesn't happen, and the, the, the main lesson that I, I took from what I learned was that the world is really big, really big on a scale that's almost greater than the, the human mind's abil ability to encompass with its imagination, and the answers to questions are sometimes ones that are rather counterintuitive. Think, no, that, no that, that would never work. I mean, you, that could never happen fast enough to... but, but yeah. It's strange, and here it is. Right, well, the first thing is that that uh, map of the Mediterranean that I showed you earlier, uh, though it was uh, to scale, um, it's, still, it's still very big. It's still very big. And that tiny, tiny, tiny little gap that was the Gibraltar Strait is actually eight miles wide. That's, that's a lot of water, eight miles of water. And it's typically four to five hundred four to five hundred fathoms deep. So it's quite a, a deep trench of water moving. So that's got an awful lot of momentum. That's a big weight. And, and just think of the, that weight, eight miles. You couldn't fire a, a rifle, even if you aimed it up into the sky and fired. Even a modern high-powered rifle, you, you wouldn't, wouldn't get halfway across even. The bullet would drop into the water. Um, Think of a, a ship with a really broad, a big thing like the, like the old Panamax. The old Panamax was uh, 106 feet. Uh, so call it, you know, with a bit of wiggle room to get the ship through, call it a 100 foot beam. You could have 420 ships uh, side by side sail through the Straits of Gibraltar at the same time. It's eight miles is really big. Uh, OK, so that's one of the reasons. But actually, it turns out that that's not the main reason. The main reason is thanks to a slow, invisible, and rather negligible and effect thing. It's called evaporation. 
Yeah, you know, don't you? If a, a teaspoonful of water will fill a whole room when it evaporates, uh, but it takes quite a long time for that to to happen, and you can't you can't see it. It doesn't. It's it's nothing. Evaporation is nothing, right? And when you see the the Nile Delta or the mouth of the Po or the Rhone, really big rivers disgorging vast amounts of fresh water into the Mediterranean, you might be justified in thinking, why doesn't the Mediterranean just fill up and up and up and just overflow with all this water from the whole of North Africa and all of Europe and the Middle East draining into this little lake, this Mediterranean? Why doesn't it just overflow? It doesn't because of evaporation. What rainwater is, of course, also falling into the, uh, the Mediterranean. But all of that water that rains into the Mediterranean evaporates. And the water that's poured in from all those rivers evaporates. Yeah, the, the amount of evaporation from the Mediterranean is greater than all the input from all the rain and all the river. All that fresh water going in doesn't actually make the water less salty. You would think, wouldn't you, that it, that would make the water less salty as more and more fresh water is being added all the time. But actually, no. More of it evaporates. The reason that the Mediterranean uh, doesn't dry up is it keeps getting topped up from the Atlantic. And the Mediterranean is actually getting saltier all the time. Now, if you were to dip your finger into the Mediterranean, and that's really salty. But if you were to dip your finger into the Atlantic, salt water, tastes terrible. Yes, they're both very salty. And you might not be able to tell by taste that one is that much saltier than the other. But it is. The Mediterranean is significantly saltier than the Atlantic because of the evaporation, this slow, invisible, nah process that happens on such a vast scale over the whole of the Mediterranean, because the Mediterranean may look small on a map, but it's actually very big. And because of that, you get a constant, uninterrupted uh, stream of water going out into the Atlantic from the Mediterranean, because saltier water is denser. It's denser, so it sinks the less salty, but still salty Atlantic water rides over the top in another constant stream going into the Mediterranean in the other direction. Uh, and there's something called the uh, Camarinal Sill, or Camarinal Sill, not entirely sure how to say it. Uh, and at that point, it's only 150 fathoms deep. So there's this, there's this bump in the, in the sea floor. So the salt water flowing out from the Mediterranean is forced up and forced to mingle with the less salty water coming in from the Atlantic. And so a lot of the water currents and movements are actually vertical in nature rather than horizontal. By the way, um, don't get me wrong, there are currents uh, and tidal currents as, as associated with uh, the Gibraltar Strait, and they are quite complex and they can be treacherous. But the four times a day tsunami that you might expect doesn't happen. Uh, Gibraltar itself has quite a low-lying uh, airstrip, and Poseidon does not engulf it two to four times daily, uh, five times on matinees on Wednesdays. Doesn't happen. So why is that? Well, you've got this constant stream of dense, salty water going out, intermingling. Oh, and friction. Yeah, you may think that uh, water, is, it's, water is used as a lubricant. I mean, you try to stop a car in the wet and you realize it takes a lot longer to do it, even with really grippy tires on grippy asphalt. And when you go to the, the water slides in, in the water park, the flumes, and you go, <laughs> water is really, really slippy. Yeah, it's a lubricant. But if you've got an eight mile wide load of water going that way and another eight mile extremely heavy um, tide of, but don't call it, use the word tide, current of, of water going that way, the friction between them is actually, on that scale, really big. And one rubbing against the other, each has a calming effect on the other. And because there's this constant, uninterrupted stream of dense water flowing out, you don't get that massive inrush of water when the, uh, the tides are higher in the Atlantic. It all amazingly cancels out. Now, you may think that surely for any system to be so fantastically well balanced, uh, that's, that's proof of a creator, of a designer. No, any system 
will find a point of balance and then when it finds its point of balance stop there imagine you've got a, a weighing scale here and uh, it's got a little hod on the top of it and you put your heavy thing into the weighing scale and the needle goes woo like that and you drop it in and the needle goes past uh, the, the correct uh, weight for that thing and then do, 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 settles on its weight so at that point the spring of the weighing scale uh, springing upwards is exactly counterbalanced by the weight of the thing pushing down but if the thing had been heavier then it would have been counterbalanced at a different point and if it had been lighter at a different point and when you dropped it in it went past but it had gone too fast so it came back and passed and it then found its point of balance whatever that point of balance happens to be and stays there you could say the same of all sorts of systems so the system balanced with uh, the Strait of Gibraltar being as wide as it is now if there were amazing deluges every day they would be smashing rocks and eroding that gap much much wider and of course this did happen about five and a third million years ago uh, any ancestors of the Barbary apes strictly speaking macaques uh, that today live on uh, the, the Gibraltar probably would not be marveling at the delicate balance of the system when they saw the dry bowl that was the Mediterranean then suddenly get inundated because the Atlantic yes eventually just broke through and yes that huge amount of water that entire ocean then just went whoosh and flooded the Mediterranean very quickly um, and then of course it caused a tremendous amount of erosion and it scoured out that four to five hundred fathom deep uh, uh, gorge in the, in the seabed that is now the Strait of Gibraltar uh, but when the evaporation and this currents when all that happened uh, it found its point of balance at eight miles wide there you go that was the point there the, the point of balance that it reached and then it reached stability so it stopped there there was no designer it could have been that the point of balance would have been at four miles wide or one mile wide or 16 miles wide turns out eight miles wide will do it <laughs>